Hey folks, in this video I want to show you how the concatenate function works in Google Sheets. We're going to look at some examples of using the concatenate function together with just the simple concat function and using the ampersand sign. And we'll dive in and have a look at how we can create complex concatenation like this inside of another function. You can see here we've got a, a custom function here with, with the ChatGPT function. This function allows you to combine two or more strings, making it a really valuable tool for creating labels or combining data from multiple cells and lots more. So with that said, let's dive in and take a look at how it's done. So first up, I just wanted to quickly dive in and just show you the concat function, which is kind of the simplified version of the concatenation. So with this one, it is very limited. Let me just show you the concat. If we look for con, you can see that we've got the concat here, and then there's also the concatenate. So this one here, it only concatenates, or it only concats two values, whereas this one allows you to add multiple things, cells or strings. So this one is very limited, but it has its use cases. So you can see here that you can concatenate two strings together like this, or two cells together. So let me show you what that would look like. If we choose this cell, and then we add a comma to move into the value two and choose this one, you can see that it just mashes them together. So if we close the parentheses and hit enter, that's what you get. So you could do it using strings. And if we do that, we could say, we could put a space at the end, close the, the quotes, put a comma, and then open up our second word there. And you can see that we've now got a space in here. So using it that way would work okay. Using it this way, you would have to actually put a space in one of these cells either before this word or after this word, and that would then put the, the space in here as well. So that's two examples of using the concat. And as I say, there, there are use cases when that, that will do the job just fine, but for probably for most cases, you'll need to look at the concatenate function. So let's have a look at that one. So this is a common one. You might have names in first names and last names in each column like this. So let's do a concatenate. So we'll choose this one here. With this one, you, we can just add multiple strings together. It just depends one to the next. So very similar to the last example, we can choose this as our first and this as the second. And you can see it just mashes them together here. So that would be exactly the same as what we just had a moment ago. But in order to make this a bit more dynamic, we can change this by adding some custom element in the middle here with some double quotes. So we can put a double quote with a space and another double quote. So that's our second concatenation there. Then we move into another argument where we choose the second name here now. So you can see we've got three concatenations here. We've got the first name, a space, and then the last name, all separated with these commas. And so that one works pretty well when you want to achieve something like this. You could do it for product labeling. So in this example, we might do the concatenate here. And so what we want to do is we want to join all of these things together, but we want to put some bits and pieces in, in between them. So let's put in here our quotes again, and we can put say a hyphen and another quote with some spaces either side of that. Then we can move into the second part for the size. So you can see there's 16 apples we can move then into the next argument. Now you can put spaces in here, it doesn't matter though, a space between here won't count. If you want to space this out to, to make it more readable for you, that's entirely possible. And so we can say in here, let's say ounces for the size, we have a hyphen. And then we want this one here as a price. So what we can do is we can add a pound sign or a dollar sign, whatever you're looking to do. Close that one off there. And then we can add this one now, because there is no space after this pound sign, these two will just mash together. And then you can see there, that's that's the result that we get. So something like that allows you to join all of these things together with custom pieces in the middle. And what you end up with is just a simple completed label in one cell like that. So the possibilities are endless really, you know, in terms of what you can put in, in between all these different things. As long as you've got the cells and they don't even have to be next to each other. You know, this, this could be here. You could have a size over here and a price over here. The concatenate function doesn't care. So if we just put this over here, this still works okay. It's just taking these two values plus this one over here, it just joins them all together. Another use case might be URLs. So in this case, we have the 
the slug part of the URL here. So the end part, if you like. So what we can do in this one is I'll concatenate and we'll open up with the main URL. So that's just my spreadsheet, wise.com URL. And then we can add each one of these individually to the end of this. So we'll just close the, the quotes there. So that's the first part, that's our first string. Then we put a comma to move into the next part of the string. And all we do is we just choose this, this one cell here, and we can close the parentheses here and hit enter. And you can see that now we've got the full URL for that post just there, and then we can drag this down. So that's another really useful case to, to build up URLs if you've got the, the slug part and you you know the beginning part of the URL. So let me just, this is a really um, interesting one and it's something that is really useful if you've got dynamic sheets like in this particular case here. So this particular table is set up so that we've got these drop down chips here. And when you choose one of these things at the top here, it actually changes what you can see at the bottom here so that you can see that the revenue in the United Kingdom with the product of skate. And so if we change that to a lawnmower, then the lawnmower comes down here and we can change the country. So all of this is dynamic. And so that is done using the concatenation, but using the ampersand signs in place of the concatenate function itself. So this is kind of a shorthand version of the concatenate. So it's not really a function, you know, you literally just build this up one piece at a time. So in this case here, we were just saying with the quotes uh, revenue in, then we put an ampersand sign. And again, you don't need a space in here. So this can be like this. It, it won't change the outcome of the text. Same here, all of these can be taken out. I usually put them in just because I think it makes things look a little bit cleaner when you want to read it. So we have the, the quotes with a space at the end here. So that when we join this to this particular cell here, which is the country, we have a space between the word in and Canada in this particular case. So you can see there, there's that space there. And then we're joining that again with the ampersand sign to another piece of text. And again, we have a space after this hyphen at the end here, so that with the word product, there is, or after the, after the hyphen, sorry, there's a, there's a space before we join it finally to this product over here, which is in this drop down cell here. So that is a really handy way to make some text in a cell dynamic. When you change something else within the formula, within the sheet, sorry, you know, this, this piece of text alters according to what you've got in that function. And then lastly, this is quite an interesting one. Um, if you haven't seen the post that I've done on the ChatGPT function in Google Sheets, um, I'll pop a card up above, make sure you go check that out. But just to show you how that actually works in, in its full sense. So I wanted to just build this up so you can see how all of this is put together. So let's just delete this and we'll start from the from scratch here. So in here, if we just start with the concatenate function and for the first part of the string, we want to, essentially what we're doing here is we're creating a sentence and we're going to pass that sentence into the custom function. Now this may not make a great deal of sense unless you've watched that chat GPT video, I really encourage you to go watch that because it's such a powerful custom function that you can use within your own Google Sheets. Um, I'm sure you probably heard of the ChatGPT by OpenAI by now. If you haven't, then you've probably been under some rock for some time, but it's if you haven't heard of it at all, then make sure you go check it out. It's, it's such a, a revolutionary thing and you can use it within your own Google Sheets. So let's start with writing this sentence. So we're going to say write A and then we'll put a, a space, close the uh, double quotes there and then we want to join to our next string and so we're going to say we want to write in this case a Twitter and then we would open up the double quotes again with a space at the beginning post about and then we put a space at the end and some close off the double quotes again so you can see this is building up here write a Twitter post about and then we want to join that to a topic that we have here so we want to write a Twitter post about health and fitness, and then we're going to add the double quotes again to continue the sentence in a, with another space at the end here. And then we want an inspiring, in this case, this is a drop down chip. We can change this to some other, um, you know, approachable, approving, encouraging, whatever we want to do. So an inspiring, and then again, we open up double quotes, tone, 
the voice. And then we close the double quotes there. So if we hit enter now, that's our sentence. Write a Twitter post about health and fitness tips in an inspiring tone of voice. That's the first part, how we're creating the sentence in this case. What we're going to do now is we're going to push this concatenation function, this whole thing here, inside of the chat GPT function. So what we do is we just wrap this with the GPT function. So we just put that at the beginning. Now this forms part, or this, this actually, this concatenation we just created is the prompt for this chat GPT function. So now at the end here, we can just move into the next argument for this particular function. So this is just that whole, all, this whole thing here is just that prompt. And for our max tokens, we're going to use this value here. And for our temperature, we're going to set that to one. Now, again, if this doesn't make sense to you, go watch that video. It'll, it'll all make a bit of sense once you've seen that. But I just wanted to show you how this is constructed using the concatenation inside of another function like this. And then when we close the parentheses on that and hit enter, the ChatGPT will kick in and create us a sentence based upon everything we just said there. So start your day off with a healthy breakfast and some stretching for an energizing start to your day and so on and so forth. So the power of concatenation, you can see it just, it lends itself to so many different scenarios that you can use it in. So it's a really powerful function you want to, to try and get to, to grips with. I use it an awful lot and I'd encourage you to do the same. So I hope you found that useful guys. If you did, make sure you give us a thumbs up and subscribe to the channel. I'd really appreciate that. But that's all for today. Thanks for watching folks.